Good morning, everyone. Please do not phase me out. Don't turn it off. Keep it on, please, by all means. We are here to worship God in the beauty of holiness. We are here to uh, let him know how much we appreciate him for all that he is and all that he has done for us. Uh, along with that today, we are going to be celebrating our graduates, both high school and college. There are six people that are represented in that effort on today, and I pray that you will uh, engage in that, celebrate that with us. We know normally this would be the day that we would have a, a packed house whereby we are uh, recognizing our seniors in particular, but uh, this Sunday uh, we know with the circumstances that we're dealing with are a little bit different uh, than the times that we have been having. So we're asking you again to engage, be ready, not laying up in the bed, on alert, ready to worship, ready to praise. Uh, our young ladies are going to be leading us in song today along with the band. Warren, uh, Ken, Damon are here. Uh, we have those again that represent as far as our college, our high school students and also our college graduates. They are here and they are all ready to go. So we just wanted to do the whole thing to put on the regalia, the whole nine yards, just to celebrate with them and to let them know again how much we appreciate what the Lord has done in their lives and allowing them to commence this new journey uh, that God has them on. So come on, let's join in in praise of our God. Uh, uh, Jeremy Ben is going to lead us in the reading of the scriptures. Monique is going to come and lead us in the word of prayer uh, right after the, the song. Uh, then once that is done, we're going to have a couple of more songs we're going to share. I'm going to come back and share a brief word of God uh, with us on today, uh, hopefully to give a word of encouragement, especially to our high school students. And then we're going to uh, move forward in our ceremony, if you will, of celebrating along with them in terms of what the Lord has done. So come on, let's join together. Let's stand wherever we are and give God the praise he deserves.
God, you are righteous. And Father, I thank you that you have shown us that you are beneficial. You have benefited us, Father, when we haven't had jobs, when we've lost and cut our income. You have benefited us when we couldn't see our loved ones, when we've lost loved ones and couldn't go see them. You have benefited us, Father, in our homes to show us that we can connect to each other. Father God, I thank you that you're so great. Then, Father, I come praying that you forgive us. Forgive us, Father, that you have done all these things for us, yes. and yet we tend to complain. Yet we tend to kind of murmur, Father God, that things aren't normal. Lord, I ask that you show us, Father God, who you are in the midst of this. Show us that your kindness and your love surrounds us. Then, Father God, I ask you to forgive us. Forgive us for not understanding what's going on in the world. Forgive us for being upset that people are getting sick and we don't can't go back to our jobs and we're stuck in the house. Father God, but remind us that you have a greater plan. And this is just a small piece of the puzzle that we yeah. can't quite see. Then, Father God, I come thanking you. Thank you, Father, for all the things that you have done. Thank you for keeping us in a portion of our health, Father God, because we realize if we had no health and we were all sick and down, we could not serve you as we should. So thank you for just the portion that you have given us. And Father God, I ask that, thank you, that although we may have aches in our bodies, our minds may not always think clearly, that our talk and our listening skills, Lord, are not always what you call them to be. I thank you for still blessing us. I thank you for still showing mercy on us. Then, Father God, I come praying for the nation. Father God, I'm praying for the families that have lost loved ones. Mm -hmm. Not just a certain race, Father God, or an ethnic background. For all families who've tragically lost loved ones. Father God, I'm asking that you hold and keep those families, Father God, because they have lost. Father God, then I ask that you bless the nation because we do feel a sense of loss. Father God, I ask that you keep us, and not just keep us, but keep us in your perfect peace. Then, Father God, I come from the con for the connection of the church, all churches, Father God. Keep us connected. We may be tired of Zoom and tired of the remind and tired of the calls, Father God, but remind us that we have to stay connected. And thank you for reminding us that the church is not just the building, but it is us. Let us be the church, Father God, when we go out. Let us be the church in our homes. Let us be the church in our neighborhoods and our communities. Father God, you've been so gracious. I thank you. I love you. And thank you for always watching over us. Amen. Amen. Let's put our hands together for the hand. We're going to ask our children to come up. Ask our children to come up. Come on to the screen. And uh, we're going to uh, do our children's song, Father Abraham Has Made His Sons. All right. <laughs> Abraham, Father Abraham, let's get a little workout, y'all.
Good little workout this morning, huh? Excellent, excellent. All right. We know uh, the many blessings come. Uh, God told Abraham that he's gonna, that because of Abraham, his nation is going to be blessed. Everyone is going to be blessed, and we're all from the blessing of, of, of Abraham. This song here is so we, every time we turn around, we're blessed. Blessing on blessing, blessing on blessing. We can't count our blessings. So if you want to be seated, you can, but we're going to do a little dance here. We're going to do a, a dance because we, they're so happy they, they're blessed, they're going to dance for you, okay? Oh. All right. All right. Put your hands together. Okay. Well, come on. Let's tap like this. I read it every time. Every time I turn around. Every, every. I'm a blessed people. I'm a blessed people. I'm a blessed people. Step, 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 step up. Backstand still, matter of fact. Everywhere you look, you got a blessing on the way. Step up. Backstand still, matter of fact. Everywhere you look, you got a blessing on the way. Turn it out to the right. Uh huh. Clap, clap. Turn it out to the left, uh-huh, clap, clap, in the new direction with a brand new step up, backstand still, matter of fact, everywhere you look, you got a blessing on the way, step up, backstand still, matter of fact, everywhere you look, you got a blessing on the way, turn it out to the right, uh-huh, clap, clap, step up, white guard, step back, the white guard, turn it out to the left, uh-huh, clap, clap, in the new direction with a brand new step up, backstand still, matter of fact, Everywhere you look, you got a blessing on the way. Step up, back then, still matter of fact. Everywhere you look, you got a blessing on the way. Turn it out to the right, uh huh. Clap, clap. <laughs> Turn it out to the left, uh huh. Clap, clap in the new direction. Look. If you want to see your blessing, just look at me. If you want to see your blessing, just look at me. If you want to see your blessing, just look at me. Don't, Don't hate, take, take it, it up, up with God. God. He did it. If you want to see your blessing, just look at me. You wanna see your blessings? Just look at me. You wanna see your blessings? Just look at me. Don't no, hate, take, take it, it up, up because God. God. If you wanna see your blessings, just look at me. If you wanna see your blessings, just look at me. If you wanna see your blessings, just look at me. Don't no, hate, take, take it up because God. God. He did it. If you wanna see your blessings, just look at me. If you wanna see your blessings, just look at me. If you wanna see your blessings, just look at me. Don't no, hate, take, take it up because God. Step up, back stand still, matter of fact. Everywhere you look, you got a blessing on the way. Step up, back then, still back back. Everywhere you look, you got a blessing on the way. Turn it out to the right, uh huh. Clap, clap, step up. White dog, step back. White dog, turn it out to the left, uh huh. Clap, clap, to the new direction with a brand new. Step up, back then, still matter of fact. Everywhere you look, you got a blessing on the way. Step up, back then, still. Everywhere you look, you got a blessing on the way. Turn it out to the right. Clap, clap to the new direction, ha. Turn it out to the left, ha. Clap, clap to the new direction. The Lord you get, the more God's gonna bless you. The Lord you get, the more God's gonna bless you. The Lord you get, the more God's gonna bless you. The Lord you get, the more God's gonna bless you. The Lord you get, the more God's gonna bless you. The Lord you get, the more God's gonna bless you. I'm gonna live the way. Step up, step up. Back there, still back back. Everywhere you look, you got a blessing on the way. Step up. Back there, still back back. Everywhere you look, you got a blessing on the way. Turn it out to the right, uh huh. Clap, clap, step up. Watch God step back. Watch God turn it out to the left, uh huh. Clap, clap to the new direction with a back. Do one more time. Come on, ladies. Y'all bless, huh? Y'all feel blessed this morning? <laughs> step up. If you know you best, raise your hand in the house tonight, this morning. Step up. 
Step back. Turn it out. Ha. Turn it out. In a new direction with a brand new blessing. Yeah. <laughs> Amen. 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 That was, that was one of those live things. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm 61 now, y'all. You know, so it's, I'm allowed. I'm allowed a few errors, all right? Everybody, you know, I'm allowed a few errors right now. So I do apologize. I do apologize. I know somebody is already writing on the screen. Oh, that look bad. Don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. God is a forgiving God. God understands all these things. So we're good. We're good. Here's what I want to do. I want to ask us to get ready now for our offering time. Get ready for our offering time. You know how you are used to giving. You know the way that you used to give it. Some of you have already done so. Some of you can do it right now. Uh, there are others you, of you who are preparing uh, that uh, envelope to be able to give. And what you do again at the end of the service, we've said to many of you, just call your deacon. Let them know uh, that you want them on the way uh, to be able to come get those gifts that God has blessed you to give. Uh, just a couple of things that we do, just as a reminder for us, even before we get started today. Also looking at, uh, we got some birthday celebrations. So I need everybody to give me a power clap when I call out these names. Patricia Perkins, Lauren Freeman, Carol Jackson, Shakendra Ben, Percy Ben Sr., Madison Harris, and Henry Smith Jr. Amen, amen, amen. Happy birthday to every one of you, and congratulations on God allowing you and supplying you another year of being able to celebrate uh, that life that God has given you. Our announcements again for this week are what our, our normal uh, schedule times right after we're done today. Our Sunday school is going to uh, take place. Some of you did receive the, uh, the message, the, uh, the post that we put out on Facebook about the reopening again of worship. And I pray <coughs> that as a church, we remain patient, that we remain faithful. Uh, it's clear to us that some things are starting to change in our country again, uh, if you will. We're having more positives. We're having more hospitalizations that are being done. And so if you haven't looked at that post yet, please look at it at your leisure. Please, ma'am, please, sir. It gives you an understanding of what we are, the decisions that were made, again, with the deacons, the ministers, the elders, of our congregation, having had conversation with some of the medical personnel of our church and others, um, and you will have an understanding of what we're doing, why we're why we're doing what we're doing, as it's going to be really going forward. But keep that in mind. Uh, we want everybody to be engaged with what we're doing, the study of God's word, the uh, lessons that are going to be presented, whether it's for our, our children, our youth, our adults. Uh, please get on schedule so that we can do those things once again that bring glory and praise and honor to God. As we said, that we're here today ultimately to worship our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. That's our ultimate purpose every time we gather together. But we also want to commemorate and celebrate with our young people. Uh, this is the first time, I think, in the history of our church as it relates to the graduates of this particular year. The high school graduates are all male this year. And that is just an absolute wonderful thing <coughs> for us to keep in mind. And so... We are grateful and thankful to God. And then we have two, three college graduates, and you're going to be seeing them shortly. And I pray that, again, you will be patient uh, until that time that we can present them to you on this particular day. 
I ask that you return in your Bibles again to 1 Kings chapter 3. 1 Kings chapter 3. <coughs> Jeremy's already read it for our read and our hearing, but I would that we would turn to that passage again. And we will read it again and then for a few moments that God allows us uh, to be able to share in the word of God uh, what God is saying to us concerning his word. 1 Kings chapter 3, beginning at verse number 4. And the word says, Now the king went to Gibeon, meaning Solomon, to sacrifice there, for that was the great high place. Solomon offered a thousand burnt offerings on that altar. At Gibeon, the Lord appeared to Solomon in his dream by night. God said, Ask, what shall I give you? And Solomon said, You have shown great mercy to your servant David, my father, because he walked before you in truth, in righteousness, and in uprightness of heart with you. You have continued this great kindness for him, and you have given him a son to sit on his throne as it is this day. Now, O Lord, my God, you have made your servant king instead of my father David, but I am a little child. I do not know how to go out or come in. And your servant is in the midst of your people whom you have chosen, a great people, too numerous to be numbered or counted. Therefore, give to your servant an understanding heart to judge your people that I may discern between good and evil. For who is able to judge this great people of yours? Our Father and our God, how we thank you once again just for the blessing of life. We thank you, God, for bringing us together as you have on this day. We are mindful, Father, of the situation that we're in as it relates to the worldwide pandemic. We are reminded of where we are as it relates again to the various protests that are going on around our nation. We are reminded, Father, that we're still in a world that has fallen and broken, a world whereby evil is still taking place. But God, we're also reminded of the fact that you are God who is great. You are awesome. You are worthy of all honor, all glory, and all praise. And for that, Father, we pause right now to say thank you. Thank you again for demonstrating to us that you are still on your throne. You took care of seven billion folk while we slept, whether we slept for 10 minutes or whether we slept for 10 hours. You showed us that this world still belongs to you, and we are humbled by that reality <coughs> and thankful for the fact that you allow us to live in your world to the end that we're still able now to worship you. We're able to walk. We're able to talk. We're able to think. We're able to go on those jobs that you have blessed us with. We're able to live in the houses that you blessed us with. We're able to drive the vehicles and ride in the vehicles, the transportation that you have given us. And so, Lord, we recognize that everything about us is really all about you. So we thank you, Father, for allowing us that demonstration of your power, of your presence, and of all of your provision. We pray now, Lord, that as we get ready to speak your word, that you would help us to be mindful of those that possibly would be with us today, those of us, those that are going through some difficult seasons. God, I pray for uh, the Derry family, for Dee Dee and her family who buried a cousin in Alabama last week. I pray. Again, Lord, that you continue to keep them in your perfect peace and your, with their minds stayed on you. I pray for the family of Sterling Guillory, God. You know what that family is going through. I pray for my aunt, Marcia's aunt, Sister Henrietta, and her family, God, that you would bless them all in the need they stand, God. I pray again that you would touch bodies and minds and spirits and souls and help us to know again that you are great and awesome, God. Thank you for raising up Linton Jason, God. Thank you again for allowing him to go through what he went through and bringing him up to where he is now. And we pray, God, that as we continue to worship you and to love you and to give you praise, that you will accept our service of worship on this day. To the end, Lord, that when we get through, we can say we heard a word from God, and it would not be a word that would simply stay in our lips or in our heart. It would be a word that we will allow to be activated in our lives to the end that we will live it out in a way that brings praise and glory and honor to you. So we thank you for this opportunity. It's in Christ's name we pray, and we pray it for his sake. Amen. Just to tag this test, again, this text for those of you that are in our hearing today, I just want to encourage our young people and those 
who are the graduates going on from where you are in college into the various e areas that you're going on in life, just to tag this text, to be on fire for the Lord, be on fire for the Lord. Our young people, our young people know uh, that, that, that fire refers to something that is really cool and amazing. Uh, it is another way of telling you all to slay it. Uh, the reality means that you have confidence that we have confidence that you will do well and, and that you will succeed. As a matter of fact, as a matter of fact, young people, uh, we have the hope that one day we'll just say we got some of your accomplishments uh, because we expect you to do some great things in your future. These are words and terms that would have been used of Solomon in his day and time. You remember, we've been talking about Solomon who uh, is the son of David from a, a, a woman that David married in a very immoral situation. He was uh, the name of Bathsheba. We know that story that uh, one day that David is on the top of his, uh, his palace and looking down from there, he sees a woman and the Bible says that rather than being where kings ought to be, David finds himself um, sexually Im Im in a sexually immoral relationship with Bathsheba. And to that uh, relationship, though, in the grace of God, this child, Solomon, after the first child died, who was a part of that immoral situation, God gave Bathsheba and David another son, and they named him Solomon. That word Solomon uh, in the Hebrew word is the word shalom. It is the word of peace. And the reason that he has that name is because the fact that David was a great warrior, and as a result of him being a great warrior, God had allowed him now at this point in his life to have rest from all of his enemies. That was not an enemy that David had. That was no one that was against David at this point in history. That was no one who was um, uh, uh, fighting David. He had no adversaries. He was living in a time of just blissful peace. Therefore, he names his son Solomon, Shalom, as a reminder of the peace that he has around him. And after a certain amount of time, after David got old and after he has gone off the scene, the Bible says that God now raises up Solomon to be what we would term as the third king of Israel. He is a young man at this particular time. He is a, basically he defines himself, when you saw it in the text, he defines himself as a child in verse number 17. He says, but I am a little child. I do not know how to go out or to come in. It was apparent again that even though he was a child, he had been taught things by his father that he understood that even as a child, it was important that he depended, that he trusted, that he relied upon the Lord. And so the same thing would apply to those of you that are our young people that are here today, the graduates that are here today, to all of us that are here today that regardless to whatever stage we are in life, we always got to rely, we always have to trust, we always have to depend on the Lord. If we're going to make it in life, it's okay for you to talk back to me. It's, if you're going to make it in life, you got to be willing to understand that you have to depend on the Lord. And so Solomon now, now he has this role, he has now been he has graduated from being that of a prince, and he now is in the role of a king. And in this kingly role, he is commencing to be the king. His commencement ceremony is one, it was, it was an elaborate one, it was, a, it was a great one that he was presented before all of Israel as the king as a result again of his father declaring that even though David had some other sons, uh, one by the name of Adonijah had actually tried to take over the kingdom by himself, but God had determined it would be Solomon would be the one who would reign. And so at his commencement ceremony, uh, he is presented as the king. He is now graduated from being prince. He is now going to be the king. And one night, the Bible says that in a dream, God, God, God appears to him. God, God comes to him. And God said to him, if you look at verse 5, he says, ask, what shall I give you? And so Solomon said, you have shown great mercy. He knew what, what the Lord had done for his father. He knew how the Lord had blessed his dad. He was a major warrior. He was a great king. He had 
he had, had, had defeated every enemy possible. And so he understood that it had been the Lord that was on his dad's side. So even though he was young, he had enough sense to know that he could ask, could go to the Lord for what he needed. He reminds him in verse 7, he says, Now, Lord, my God, you have made your servant king instead of my father David, but I am a little child. I do not know how to go out or to come in. And he says, your servant is in the midst of your people whom you have chosen, a great people too numerous to be numbered or counted. And notice what he says in verse number 9. That is the content of our, our, our passage today. He says, therefore, give your servant an understanding heart to do what? To judge your people that I may discern between good and evil. For who is able to judge this great people of yours yeah so 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 this message today this message today uh, I'm, I'm, I know I'm speaking to Thomas and Corinthian and Javon I'm speaking uh, to uh, to Shemet to Monique again to Anthony those again who are our graduate but the reality of this message is is really designed for all of us because we all find ourselves at a point in life where we need some understanding would you all agree we need some understanding. We need somebody to help us to understand. I think Monique said it in her prayer, Lord, there's a lot that's going on that we don't fully understand. There's a lot that's going on we are still trying to figure out. But the one one do that we know can give us some help to understand is the Lord. So, so what does do? And that's the same thing I want to encourage uh, young men, young ladies, uh, this is the same thing I want to encourage you to do. I want you to be like Solomon. Ask the Lord to help you. Number one, you got to ask the Lord, Lord, help me to listen. Help, help me to listen. Notice what Solomon says in verse number nine. Therefore, give your servant an understanding heart. Lord, help me to listen. That word, that word understanding is the, in the, in the Hebrew word is the word samah. And the word is not just about having knowledge. It's not just about gaining insight, but it's about listening. It, 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 it's, about, it's about listening. Young men, you guys are getting ready to go off to college. Some of you are going into the armed services, whatever it may be, whatever you may be going into, into, into the, to your career, whatever that may be. But, man, you got to understand, ladies, you got to understand, you got to listen to somebody. And more than anything else, you got to listen to the Lord. Solomon said, Lord, give me a heart of understanding. Give me the ability to listen. As a matter of fact, James would remind us of that in his word. He said, be swift to hear and slow to speak. That's the reason God gave us two ears and one mouth. Because sometimes we spend more time talking than we do listening. God is saying to every last one of us, Lord, give, or we're asking God, Lord, give me a heart of understanding, meaning help me to listen. Let me to listen to you. Help me to listen to people because I don't know about you all, but I've learned in life, I, I have made it through life by listening to some folk who've already been where I was trying to go. Can I get a witness in here? I made it through life by listening to some folk with a whole lot more experience than I had, a whole lot more understanding of life than I had, and it's important to live your life in such a way that you're willing to listen. I, I, I don't know about you. I, I, I know some people, man, who don't want to listen to nobody. I know some folk who always, they are, I got it. I always got it. I always got it. But when you look at them from the outside in, you see that those are the folk who make the greatest mistakes. They, they, they are sometimes the most frustrated people in life. Why? Because they don't want to listen to anybody. God, Solomon is saying, I am the king. Matter of fact, he would be, he would, there was nobody higher than Solomon in terms of what he did. But Solomon is saying, Lord, still give me an understanding heart. And let me tell you, the, one of the reasons that you all need that, young men, ladies that are, that are here, you need that because, you, man, you guys are going into a volatile time in our country. You are 
going off to college, you're going off into military service at a very volatile time in our country. And listen, you're going to hear a whole lot. Folk going to be saying this. They're going to be saying that. They're going to be saying do this. They're going to say do that. And you're going to hear a whole lot of conversations. I don't know about you all. Sometimes I watch the news and I just got to turn it off because I, I hear one thing on the same situation on CNN. I turn to Fox News. They're talking about the same situation, but it's a total different sight and I don't know who to listen to so I just go to my Bible and I say I know that somebody that I can count on that's going to always give me the truth and guess what that's the Lord so so you got to ask the Lord Lord help me to listen not only you got to ask the Lord to help you to listen but Solomon would say you got to help me Lord to look help me to look help me to see what I need to see notice what he says he says therefore give your servant an understanding heart to judge your people. Watch this. That I may discern, watch this, between good and evil. That word, that word discern means to perceive. It means to see. It means to understand, but it's always with the idea of how do I respond in, a, in a, an appropriate way to what I see. Because you're going to see things. You're going to see all kinds of things. You're going to be you're going to be exposed to all kinds of things. And on a daily basis, you all, we are exposed to all sorts of things. People are saying this, and we're seeing that. We're seeing what's going on with the protests. We're seeing what's going on with the burning of buildings in our country. We see what's going on with the looting and the rioting. We see all of those things that are going on. And we need to know how to perceive that. Everything that we're seeing, though it may look right, doesn't mean it's right. Everything that we're seeing that there's a declar declaration that is okay to do it, it may not be okay to do it. So we got to know, you got to know how to look at that thing. You know, I'm looking at, I'm looking at Thomas Javon, I'm looking at, at Corinth right now, Corinthian right now, and these are some, some handsome looking young men. Y'all get ready to go off to college and all that kind of thing, go off to service, man. Guess what, y'all going to be seeing some pretty women. Y'all going to see some pretty girls. Oh, yeah, you're going to see some brick houses. You're going to like, ooh, we. Oh, she sure, she sure look good. But guess what? You better listen to how she talk. Let me tell you something. As a young man, as a young man, it used to be back in the day, you know, we talk about our rap and all that kind of thing. Hey, man, you go try to talk to her, and you're like, no, man, you go, you go. No, man, you go. But be looking at a girl. She just as fine, good looking as she could be, man, until she opened her mouth. The moment she opened her mouth, you say, oh, Lord, I should have stayed where I was. So what I'm saying, you got to be willing to, to look you got to be willing to listen because you're going to be there exposed to all kinds of situations. Young ladies, the same thing. Y'all know y'all see those good dudes. They, they look good. I mean, they, you know, I mean, you got some who, who wear the pants low, some who wear the pants high, whatever it may be. They can look a certain way, but you got to be willing to listen to what they got to say. And when they say something, you got to determine, is what they're saying really making sense? Solomon said, I need an understanding heart. I need to be able to see what's good. I need to be able to see what's evil because, folks, you got to understand, everything that looks good ain't good. Everything that can present itself as good is not always good. So you're going to need God and just ask him, say, Lord, help me to listen. And then, and then you say, Lord, help, help, me to, help me to look at things the right way. And then here's the final thing I want to share with you is that you got to ask God, help me, help me, help me to be loyal. Help me to be loyal. Help me, help me to be loyal. Notice, notice how Solomon says it in verse number nine. He says that I may discern between good and evil for who is able to judge this great people of yours. Notice, I, I love that in verse number nine, three different times that personal pronoun is used. He says it, uh, therefore give to your servant an understanding heart to judge your people. Then at the end, he says, for who is able to judge this great people of yours? So what he's showing us is that everybody and everything belongs to God. Everybody and everything belongs to God. So when Solomon is said, referring to himself as a servant, what he is saying, Lord, help me to be loyal enough to represent you wherever I am. Listen, listen, fellas, listen, fellas. The truth of the matter is, and I know, I know the college students, again, who are more adults, and they, they've been, been on the journey a longer, longer than you have. The reality is, man, you're going to be, you're gonna be at, at, a, at a time in life that you're no longer going to be around mama. You're not going to be around daddy. You'll be able to make your own decision. You'll be able to make your own thing. But you got to remember, fellas, you got a Lord that's still looking at you. 
You got to remember, you got a God that's still looking at it. And what God is saying to you, no matter where you are, represent him. Still be loyal to the Lord. Young ladies, as beautiful as you are, some of you, again, are getting ready to go to high school, uh, 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 graduate on next year. And so you got to be loyal to the Lord. No matter what comes up, be loyal to the Lord because ultimately he's the one that's going to get you where you need to go. He's the one that's going to help you to achieve everything that you need to achieve. Solomon had an understanding. Man, if I'm going to make it in this life, I need to ask the Lord. i got to ask the Lord, Lord, help me to listen. Help me to look. And then, Lord, help me to be loyal. We are living in a time, folk, that loyalty is, is not as big as it used to be. Uh, 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 young people, listen. There was a time that it counted to be on a job 30 years, 40 years. Oh, man, you were, you were, you were considered, I mean, primo on your job. If you made it 25 years, man, they give you, they give you plaques and honors and all that kind of thing. 30 years? Oh, I'm talking about 35 years. 35 years, you could almost own the company, even if it wasn't yours. But now, that's no more loyalty. In other words, the older you get, oh, they show up looking at you now. They say, oh, oh, yeah, oh, yeah, oh, yeah. That, that joker that caught us a lot with benefits. That joker, that person. Because loyalty is no longer what it used to be. But I just encourage you, be loyal to the Lord. Not only be loyal to the Lord, fellas, but be loyal to your families. Because here's the reality. Your family has made sacrifices to get you where you are, to, to, to be able to let you be where you are today. Uh, those of you, those college students that y'all been doing that adult, that adult learning, I've been praying for you all. Oh, Monique, Shermet. Anthony, I pray for you all. That adult learning is something else. I mean, because you're already having a 40-hour week job. You're already having family you got to take care of. And then you got homework on top of homework on top of homework on top of homework on top of homework that you always got to do. But at the end of the day, God is still does not exonerate us from being loyal to him and being loyal to our family. Why? Because God is calling us no matter what goes on in our home, no matter what goes on in our nation, no matter what goes on in our world, God is still saying to you and I, be on fire for the Lord. God, God wants to use you all to do some amazing things. He's going to use you all to do some great things, but you got to be on fire for the Lord. You got to be willing to allow that God to use you as young as you are, uh, uh, as, as, as the, the matriculation that you all have done in, 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 in the endeavors that you've reached in reaching doctorate status and master status and, and all of the other things that you have done. God is saying, be on fire for me because the reality is none of us have yet arrived. None of us have gotten to a point that we can sit, settle, and soak and say, I've done enough. We got to keep pressing forward. We got to keep pressing on. And I'm encouraging you, no matter what you may do in life, remain and be on fire for the Lord. May the Lord bless you. And may the Lord forever keep you is our prayer. Be like Solomon. Ask the Lord to help you. Help me to listen. Help me to look. And help me to be loyal. If there's anyone today that may be listening to us that hasn't trusted in Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, today is the day. Right now is the time that you can do that. No matter who you are, no matter where you come from, uh, God has uh, given his son, the Lord Jesus Christ, as a means whereby you can be saved today. And you may be saying, to be saved from what? Saved from the penalty of sin. And you may be asking the question, what is sin? Sin is rebellion against God. Sin is when a human being says to God, I got this. I don't need you to tell me what to do. I got this. That's sin. And it has a way of dividing us from God. But God has, has a remedy for sin, and it's his son. Jesus Christ. And he says that we got to believe. What, do we must, what must we believe about Jesus? We must believe that he did live. We must believe that he did die. We believe that he was buried in the grave. We believe, again, God raised him from the dead. We believe that he's sitting right now in the hand, right hand of his father, that he ascended back to the father. But we also believe that one day he's coming back. And if you can believe that today, the Bible says you will be saved. You will be saved from the penalty and the consequences of sin. So today, if you haven't trusted him, here is your day. Here is your moment. Here is your minute in mind. And you yourself can make the decision. You yourself can judge whether or not he's worthy. 
And again, if you don't have a un full understanding of that, you may be watching live streaming now or you may watch it later on YouTube and you may be watching it with someone that can explain it further to you. But if you're not, if you want to give us a call, 713-823-9457, 713, no, 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 67, 713-672-9847, I did say it right, 713-672-9847, you can call us and we will be delighted to have a conversation with you concerning what the Lord has done in you and through you today. May the Lord forever bless you and may he forever keep you is our prayer. We're getting ready now to transition over to our, our, our brief commencement, uh, really more recognition of our young people. And so I pray and trust that you will uh, enjoy the moment and wherever you are, Good Shepherd, that you would celebrate and rejoice with our young people. Some of their family members are here represented with them today. And so I pray that you will join in in celebration of what the Lord is doing in and through our young people. Stefan, are you ready, man? As we get ready again for the uh, for that time of celebration, there is going to be an opportunity for our parents, those of you that choose, if you want to come on up to the, uh, the podium to take a picture. Uh, with your uh, with your graduates, feel free to do so. And again, we just want you to enjoy this time. We want you to enjoy this time. We are uh, operating in social distancing today. Families are sitting together, those that are, are represented. But we want to let these young people know we appreciate you, we love you, and we are so grateful and thankful to you uh, for this, uh, this opportunity. Listen, since you are going to be taking pictures, uh, uh, the time that your family is called, for those of you who are going to be coming up to the stage, you can take your mask off at that point. And uh, we want you to, again, just be able to take that picture. We can see your face. Amen? Come on, let's enjoy it. Amen. Good morning again. Uh, for those of you who are at home and watching us, we do want you uh, to be a part of this uh, recognition, if you will. So send your heart, send your, send your likes, uh, send your love. Uh, just engage with us as we do this. Uh, we know a lot of times when we do graduations and ceremonies uh, in stadiums and in gyms or different auditoriums, there are a lot of rules about uh, not making noise and not having whistles and bullhorns. But it, whatever kind of noise you want to make today, you can make it. Uh, this, is, this is your time and your opportunity. You can make all the noise you want to make at home. Uh, for those of you who are sitting inside of worship with us, uh, you guys are welcome to make any kind of noise you want to. We'll give you time, as Pastor said, uh, to take pictures with your family uh, just so that you can enjoy this moment. We know that um, with COVID happening, uh, graduations and ceremonies have been pushed back and delayed, uh, as well as some of our students and graduates who have graduated from colleges uh, who are not local but out of state. So those graduations have been tabled at this time. So we did want to recognize all of our graduates. So if you're at home and even right now in the sanctuary, let's give everybody a hand, <laughs> clap for their accomplishments, <laughs> for what they've done. Amen. 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 So as Pastor said, we this year, I think for the first time in Good Shepherd history since we've been recognizing our graduates, we have uh, four male high school graduates. That's the first time uh, ever in history that we have that. So we are excited about that. So we'll jump right into it. The first family or the first individual we have is graduating from Glenda Dawson High School. Amen, amen. He was a member of the ROTC. He played varsity football and track. He plans, or he's already been accepted into the United States Navy. And he has an interest of being master at arms. Today we celebrate Thomas Franklin III. Going upstairs. He is joined by his mom, Tarankula, his brother, and his grandparents.
Hey man, let's give a hand clap for Thomas. We will recognize. Let him come up while you're doing that. We will. We will recognize this graduate. He's not here, but we do want to still recognize him. He's a graduate of Klein Oak High School. He was a member of the National Honor Society, uh, part of the varsity football team. Uh, he is enrolled on a scholarship at the University of Incarnate Word in San Antonio, Texas. He's received over two hundred and fifty thousand dollars in scholarships in academics and athletics um, he plans to major as a physician assistant and this is Tylen George <laughs> hey man he he and his family were not able to make it today but next we have graduating from the Atascacita High School he's played varsity baseball as a sophomore at Sam Rayborn and Atascacita he served as a trainer. He's received several baseball scholarships and is currently interested in attending Southwestern Assemblies of God University in Waxahachie, Texas. He is joined by his mom, Melanie. Today we present to you Corinthian Jones. Our last high school graduate, he graduated from Frank Doby High School. He was a varsity member of the football and track team. He plans to attend San Jacinto College. Today he's joined by his father, Marcus, his mom, Joanna, his brother, his sister-in-law, and his niece. We celebrate and congratulate Javon Simmons. Stop there. You should stop right there. No, come on, Javon. Come on. Zach, I need you to pan, man. Pan over to, to, to Joanna. No, no, no. You don't need to try to come up here like that. No. No, we'll uh, just, just go close over there by your mom, man. For, take the picture. Yeah, that's it. That's it. You can turn around, Joanna, if you want to. Or, or we'll just join you. We'll join you. We'll join you. Congratulations, buddy. Congratulations. Mm -hmm. Now we will transition into our, our college graduates. Um, their journey is a little bit different. Uh, all of our college graduates are, are an older crowd, if you will, um, and they've They've decided to go back to school and pursue secondary education. Uh, this first graduate, she's a mom, she's a, she's a wife. Uh, she's, a, she's a school teacher. Uh, she's a, a teacher here in our student ministry. Uh, she's the leader of our, our fearless girls. Uh, she received her master's degree in organized leadership concentration in higher education from Claremont Lincoln University. She's already accepted a new position in her role. Uh, our graduate today is Mrs. Monique Ellisor. Hey man, let's folks. give it up for Miss Monique Ellisor. Congratulations. All right, this next graduate. Wow. Hold your breath. I got a lot to say. I got a lot to say. She's also a mom. She's also a wife. Uh, she's a she's a daughter. We uh we're the same age. I think a month apart. We came up together in children's and youth ministry. And I've been out of school for, wow, 
15 years out of high school, and ever since I can remember, she's been in school. <laughs> she has received her doctorate degree <laughs> in chiropractic medicine <laughs> from the Texas Chiropractic College. She served two years as vice president and treasurer of the Student Black Chiropractic Association. She was a member of the American Black Chiropractic Association. She served two years as parliamentarian officer of her class. She is now pursuing to be a Navy medical as a microbiologist, scientist, wow. and physician Whatever that means. in the Navy Small Ready Clinic. She wants at some point to own and run her own multi multidisciplinary practice in the future. Excellent. She is joined by her husband, her son, and her parents. We present to you the Dr. Shamet Harris. Put, put that one up. Bring that one up. Yes. <laughs> Please. There you go. There you go. There we go. Amen. Excellent. Let's give it up for Dr. Shamed Doc. Harris. I'm calling you Doc now. That's Doc. It will be Doc. Yes. And last but not least, we have another college graduate. He's also a, a father, a husband. Um, he's, a, he's, a, he's a man who loves God, who works hard for his family to provide. He has received a Bachelor of Science in Business Administration with a concentration in Information Technology from Colorado Technical <laughs> University. Yes! He plans to advance his career with AT&T. Today he is joined by his, his wife, his mother-in-law, and his children. We present to you Anthony LaFleur. Let's give him a hand. Amen, amen. We thank you again, Anthony LaFleur. Let's give it another hand clap Please. of praise for our graduates. We thank you and appreciate you at home for celebrating with us, and that concludes our graduation ceremony for 2020. Amen, amen, amen. Come on, let's give God another big hand of praise, another great hand of appreciation. Uh, we know, we know again, it, this year has just been a total different kind of year for all of us, but I want to praise God for all of us, for God using us, I'm going to say it that way, to step up to the challenge that he has given us. We've not lost our mind. We've not given up. We're still pressing on. And so I just want to encourage all of you to continue to do that and ask the Lord as you go along, please keep asking the Lord to help you. Amen. Would we stand just as we get ready for our benediction uh, for this particular day? Amen. Amen. Father, how we love you and thank you so much just for this opportunity that you have granted us to be able to celebrate Christ, but also to commemorate the graduation of our high school students, the commencement of our college students as they move forward in life, God, whatever the challenges you may have for them. Not only for them, but for all of us. We know that we're still dealing with some challenges in our country, in our world, in our city, in our county. But God, we thank you for knowing that the answer is always in you. Help us again to rely on you. Help us to depend on you. Help us to trust you, Father. And then help us, God, to be loyal and act like we know you. To the end, that the glory, the praise, and the honor will always be yours. Be with us as we leave this place. Lead, guard, guide us no matter what we may be doing the next few hours in this day so that all of the honor, all the praise, and all of the glory will always be yours and yours alone. We pray it all and ask it. In Jesus' name we pray. 
Amen. 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 God bless you until we meet again.